Wow, I'm ecstatic about this. My friends at elementary have been able to hire Cassidy James Blade as a full-time employee. I hope I'm saying that right. I Blade. So yeah, full disclosure, I consider Cassidy a friend, but he's also a patron of this channel. But even still, irrespective of that, that's huge news as far as I'm concerned. Elementary is one of the premier distros, featuring a gorgeous interface and a commitment to respecting user privacy. And now, after several years of volunteer work, Cassidy has been brought on board to assist with business administration, OS development, and working with OEMs, app developers, and others to keep Elementary solvent. And that's just fantastic. It's great for everyone. And I think this is an awesome opportunity to talk about some of the ways various open source projects find their funding. I mean, after all, everybody's got to eat, right? So, hi, I'm Gardner, the Linux Gamer, and here are 10 ways open source projects bring home the bacon. Many open source projects are backed by a nonprofit. Organizations like the Linux Foundation offer membership packages that give governance rights to high tier members of the company. But membership also gives perks to individuals, including discounts on training courses and discounts on the cost of attending events sponsored by the organization. One of the most common ways free software makes money is through donations. For example, Elementary OS and the GNOME Foundation both recently received large anonymous contributions that gave them the financial momentum to continue their great work. But they don't have to be large, one-off contributions either. Many projects accept small donations from their users. Our door is one of them, with a feature on their website to send them money from a credit card or through PayPal. And you know, along the same lines, there's crowdfunding. Crowdfunding is a viable option. The RPCS3 project is one very high-profile example. The free and open source PlayStation 3 emulator has 851 patrons as of the time of this video. And they have, from what I can tell, two full-time developers who make their living from the Patreon campaign. There are so many other deserving people on Patreon too. I mean, I support a developer of GIMP. And there are other guys like Ryan Nicholas Gordon and my pal Cheeseness. And you can support any of them. There are links in the description. You have companies like Canonical, which were started by a well-off private benefactor. In the case of Canonical, Mark Shuttleworth funded the initial development of Ubuntu and the rest of Canonical's early endeavors. But that's not to say that Shuttleworth is the only source of income, which brings me to my next point. Canonical makes money from selling support. They directly support Ubuntu for OEMs and also create plans for deployment with companies looking to integrate free software into their enterprise space. There are many other kinds of services a FOSS organization can offer as well. The Linux Foundation offers legal advice when it comes to open source and licensing. Others offer training on the software they produce. And there are even cloud and IoT services that provide basic or even customized solutions for a client's needs. The pay-what-you-want model was adopted from the gaming world, where the Humble Indie Bundle offered a bunch of games for a low, customizable price. A while ago, the Elementary OS team made waves by introducing a pay-what-you-want button to their website. You can choose to support the OS with a small contribution, or download Elementary for free. It's up to you. And you know, it seemed to do well, with a few other distros copying this method of funding on their own sites. Some open source projects rely on feature requests to fund their development. A great example of this is OpenRA, which is inarguably one of the greatest FOSS games of all time. Since the project relies on copyrighted assets, the team has decided that the best way that they can support the project is by making money on what they've created, the code. If you want to help the development of OpenRA along, you can place a bounty on a feature that you want to see implemented. And when it's completed, they receive that bounty. It's an intriguing way to pay for the project's development. If you're a coder, then there's a good chance that you live and breathe programming. You work your day job writing software and then go home to work on your personal coding projects. I know that's the case for myself. So let's say that you've got some talent and you've built a useful software tool that helps you port other software over to Linux. The tool is free and open source, and you find yourself getting contract work to use the tools you've built to help bring other software to the Linux world. This contract work then allows you to improve the tools you've built 
in order for you to do your job, thus securing funding for yourself and your projects. And this isn't just a hypothetical. I mean, guys like Ethan Lee have done just this thing, creating the FNA framework, which is a free implementation of Microsoft's XNA game development libraries. Since creating this framework, he's been able to port a bunch of excellent games like Bastion, Fez, and others over to Linux, all the while improving his own open source project. Believe it or not, for years, Linus Torvalds performed his Linux kernel duties while working full-time for Transmeta Corporation. In fact, many developers use their full-time jobs as a way to improve their own open source projects. I mean, I've been known to do that. And there's a good chance that if you build something useful, you can probably find a job improving your software too. Sometimes projects are developed as free software while also being part of a larger ecosystem. Sometimes with proprietary extensions, as is the case with Wine and Crossover. So the way that works is Wine is the open source project that's developed by code weavers as a base for their product Crossover. Other times things are done as a collaborative effort between parallel projects. An example that comes to mind is Elementary's App Center and System76's Pop Shop, where System76 helped fund the development of App Center and then forked it to create Pop Shop for Pop OS. And damn, did we just come full circle? <laughs> okay, I wanna congratulate Cassidy and Elementary OS. This is great news and I can't wait to see what you guys achieve going forward. And I guess, well, that's it for now. What do you think? Did, did I miss a method that open source projects use to make money? Leave me a comment and let me know or hit me up on Twitter at The Linux Gamer. If you believe in the work that I do, you can support the show with a monthly contribution over on Patreon, or you can pick up a t-shirt over on Teespring. There's a link in the description. But whatever you do, whether it's hitting that like button or sharing this video with your friends, don't forget to subscribe to see more from me, The Linux Gamer. And as always, thank you so much for watching.